For my conceptual interview, I wanted to discuss Newton's laws of motion with uh, these students because I think Newton's laws are one of the more familiar ideas in physics and they really apply to our everyday lives. I wanted to see if students could make the connection with things that they learn in the classroom to uh, things that happen to them on a you know daily or weekly basis. It might help them a little more to remember the specifics that they need in the classroom, like the equations that go along with Newton's laws and um, different concepts that help them draw necessary diagrams to you know do their assignments. The two students that I chose to interview were Alex and Rose, two freshmen in Dr. Schroeder's first block integrated science class. And I knew I wanted to interview freshmen because typically ninth graders who take integrated science don't continue on to take physics at Henry Clay's. So I wanted to understand what challenges freshmen the most when it comes to physics and you know what makes them think it'll be too difficult of a class to take their junior or senior year. If we could discuss the fundamentals a little more, I could understand where are the misunderstandings that we can work on in the future so that they may want to challenge themselves more. So when it came to actually conducting the interview, I had four steps that I wanted to follow through, which was propose the problem, uh, using Newton's laws of motion, explain why we feel an apparent change in our weight as the elevator is moving up or down. Then I wanted the students to draw free body diagrams uh, of themselves in the elevator, uh, listing all the pertinent forces, and then using Newton's laws again to mathematically solve for the normal force in that elevator. And once they have that, to finally synthesize the information and tell me what exactly does it mean. So the biggest thing that I learned from this interview was that these students actually have a hard time remembering what Newton's laws of motion are to begin with. Uh, it's hard for us to apply them in this given scenario if we can't remember what they are. So I asked them to draw the appropriate forces acting on us as we're standing inside of an elevator. Both Alex and Rose knew that there's the force of gravity that's pulling us down, but when I asked them if there were any other forces acting on us, they both said no. If we could remember from Newton's third law that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, they would know that there is another force pointing in the opposite direction, which we would call the normal force, which means it's just normal to the surface that we're standing on. Again, it's really hard to apply these laws to this specific scenario if they didn't memorize, if they didn't remember that from when we went over the lesson maybe three weeks ago in the class. So after they had drawn the correct forces in their free body diagram, I asked both the students to tell me using Newton's second law, how do we relate these forces uh, together? Alex did not remember Newton's second law, but Rose remembered that it was the mathematical equation F equals MA, which again shows me that for some students it's really important to really hammer the fundamentals before you start asking them to apply them in a specific problem. These students need to remember force equals mass times acceleration before you ask them to add up forces. Once we finally got to that point, though, we needed to discuss how these forces are pointing in opposite directions and how if we're going to add them together, it's not just N plus FG. It had to be N minus FG because one is pointing up and one is pointing down. That was another very important uh, topic that I think students need to go over even before physics, you know, in the sense of using forces, going over vectors how direction is really important because that's going to come up again in their mathematical manipulation. I think one of the other big things that I learned from these students during our interview was um, physics is a very demanding subject in mathematics as well. It takes a good understanding of algebra to manipulate these equations that are in terms of more than one variable. And these students, I saw they had difficulty at times solving for one specific variable. In this case, 
in particular, it was the normal force. Alex had some difficulty moving the term mg to the right-hand side at times. He would think you have to subtract both sides by mg, but if mg is negative, you would have to add on both sides. Um, so I think if we wanted to promote physics education, we need to also promote taking uh, math classes, you know, like challenging yourself in your algebra classes because there's very strong connections between the two. In addition to that, I think there are some other very important uh, concepts that are reviewed at the beginning of physics classes and that they've gone over in integrated science classes as well, such as the difference between scalar and vector. Um, because as you can see here, the elevator as it's moving down, the acceleration obviously is pointing in a different direction than it was when it was moving up. This is very important because as we're setting up this force equation, we need to consider the mass times acceleration quantity to be negative if we say that the mass times gravity is negative because it's pointing down. Uh, again, both of my students had difficulty realizing that, so on top of just reviewing Newton's laws, there are, thing, there are concepts before that that are introduced to the students that need to be reviewed as well, such as scalars and vectors and how they affect the mathematical representations that we want these students to manipulate. At the end of our interview, though, both of these students did come out with the correct equation for the normal force, both for an elevator going up and down, and they both knew what they represented. They knew that the normal force when you're going up an elevator means you feel heavier than you actually are and the normal force when you're moving down is you feel lighter than you actually are. So to me this really showed that students know how to make a conclusion based on information given to them better than they can make an educated guess about what will happen or make a prediction about something. Uh, just think about how at the beginning of this interview I asked them why do you think these apparent weight changes happen and they said it's because gravity pulls you in a different direction moving up and down. Obviously by the end of this they realize gravity is always pulling you down. Gravity doesn't change. What's affecting it is your acceleration and the acceleration is affecting the normal force. So I concluded that to improve teaching these kinds of concepts in the future, uh, we need to recognize that the skill that these students need are making predictions. I think any form of visual learning is a great way for students to practice making predictions. Uh, in my interview, I asked the students to draw free body diagrams because once they do that correctly, they can look at their own representation to come up with the correct force equation that they needed to solve for that normal force. So visual learning doesn't have to be just drawing skills. For example, Henry Clay has an elevator in their building. If we wanted to perform an experiment similar to this question that I asked them in the classroom, we could have students take a small field trip to the elevator in their school. Someone can weigh, you know, weigh themselves on a scale and then read that, uh, read it again as the elevator is moving up and down and they can corroborate their findings with their predictions. And finally, I think it's really important that we continually draw connections between whatever lessons students are currently working on and previous lessons that they've done. For instance, drawing the free body diagrams when we wanted students to write the final force equations, we needed them to consider forces that were pointing in opposite directions means that one needs to be positive and the other negative. So as we discuss forces, we can review about vectors and we don't have to wait until the end of a unit to go over everything that we've done in the past. I think it's important to continually draw connections because that's the biggest thing that I learned while I was interviewing these students that they know most of the ideas that we want them to tell us. The problem is we don't we, we just need to work on what it takes for them to realize how they're related to one another.